All right. Welcome back to the True Footy Podcast after two short months. We're back, baby. Oh, that's going to be a fun edit. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes the audio. The sound waves are exploding on my screen in front of me. How are you, Druzy? Well, that's good because we've just been uh, trying to fix them for the last 20 minutes. But, uh, I'm it's out good. of practice. I haven't, I haven't done a podcast in two months, but I also haven't used this interface. For yeah, like it's probably year. filled with dust and all that stuff that happens when you don't upload on your channel for two months. But you asked me how I've been. Good, buddy. Where have you been is my question. Where have I been? I've been, uh, I've been at Bunnings, bro. Yeah? Yeah, pretty much. Lowest prices literally. are just the beginning, mate. It's true. Yeah, the advertising is true. Um, <laughs> yeah, keep been laying low, to be honest. Uh, it's been good. It's been good. Hot, yeah. Hot summer, though. It's been very hot. Yeah. Very hot uh, environment that we're filming in right now. My it house. is extremely... It is hotter than a fucking Dutch butthole. <laughs> 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 And there goes your YouTube career. Yeah, but we'll get onto right. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. Um, yeah, no, we are. Uh, we generally haven't seen each other much since the grand final. It's I been good. How, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My serotonin levels are higher than ever. How have you been? Because I have not seen. Well, I saw you. I didn't see you grand final day, but we did do a video after that. Didn't yeah, we? we did the Drew Footy Show. I just come and gave you a visit one day. Remember that when I just yeah. rocked up, and then you came for the draft live stream. Yes. So this is the third time. Yeah. That I've seen you in like four months, three months. Yeah. And, and it's been a, a much needed break, hasn't yeah. it, buddy? <laughs> yeah. What have you been up to? So basically did 30 days of fitness in December. So got hench, put on five <laughs> kilos. I'm just a muscle man, really. Nothing nothing too crazy. In a month? Yeah. That's insane. Thanks. That's what happens when... Uh, it's really not that hard, hey? Like if you eat in the calorie surplus and you go to the gym every day, you're just going to sack on muscle. It's really not that tricky. Yeah, there's, that's what most people don't realize about the gym is the calorie thing, mm. right? So they that's just all think, it is. They just think I'm going to eat more. Sometimes when you're eating more, it depends obviously on the food that you're eating, but they might not be calor- calorically dense. Mm. So uh, I, I know, for instance, that when I was eating, uh, sorry, when I was like probably around your age trying to bulk up and stuff, I thought I was eating a lot more than I was. Mm. Um, and same thing with my roommate, Dylan. Mm-hmm. Um, he kind of just eats... I mean, he's naturally genetically blessed, so he'll, yeah. he'll just kind of be like a thick boy no matter how little yeah. he eats. But he, he was literally just eating way below what the, the you know, the apps and calculations yeah, suggested yeah, yeah. was his like base, mm-hmm. to be honest. But for some reason, he could... His metabolic rate sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Although it's probably at the risk of making this the true fitness podcast. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, you can obviously just cook your metabolism a little bit by eating inconsistently. That's probably yeah. what I've done. I think my dad genetics have kicked in. <laughs> I don't. I don't mean looking like my dad. My dad has a better rig. You than mean I you do. are a dad? I mean, I'm becoming a like a dad bod. Like, what night in metros was that? <laughs> ah, <laughs> all the jokes coming out. We're back. Yeah. Uh, no, I've been pretty clean on metros. Yeah. Like we make a lot of jokes about metros. You went there like a month ago. Didn't yeah, I did. You? But that was, like, <laughs> that was the first time since April. Yeah. Okay. We're pretty good going. Yeah. We make a lot of jokes about it. Bunch of metros addicts. Um, yeah, just having withdrawals out here. We are going to metros after though. I'm just trying to convince Jesse. Yes, of we'll course. We'll get there. Of course we will. One day. Well, last time we went to metros together was literally like Boxing Day 2020. I reckon. Was it? Maybe, maybe there was one after that. Yeah, I don't think we went this year. Metro sponsor us. We'll be back. Yeah, we did make plans to go, but we just never did. Yeah, that's when I got crook. Remember, we were meant yeah. to do a live stream when St Kilda pumped West Coast. And then I was, was that that day, was it? Yeah, I was crook. And I missed. Oh, yeah, because I went anyway. That was the last time I went. There uh, you go. That was back in April. Right. Metros. Yeah. No, it was good fun. Yeah, I returned to the Heart of Darkness uh, a couple of weeks back. Good fun. <laughs> the good Heart fun. of Darkness. It was weird going there relatively sober, though. Yeah. Yeah. You, your senses are a little bit heightened and you can really smell what, <laughs> what it normally smells. What am I like. doing here? Yeah. Um, but yeah, met a few people out who watched the, sh- the channel. So. That's good. Mm. Always good for the ego. Yeah, I'm a little past the ego part. It's more just nice that... Paparazzi like, sort of vibe. Yeah, like, it. ego's like small, but like the... Yeah, just the outside noise is getting too much. You just got to go underground for a little bit and just really get to know yourself. Mm. I've actually sort of been doing that, to be honest. Yeah, right. I'm like finding out my true inner self, bro. Yeah, wait, when did we stop being real and when did you start being serious? <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, I don't know. Like, I finished uni in November, October. How did that feel? Yeah, good. Got my uh, graduation on Tuesday, All so right. I'm going to dress up like a plonker and get the certificate in that to say that I'm an exercise and sports and rehabilitation scientist, which would be fun. I never went to mine. Why not? I just couldn't be bothered. You suck. I had no attachment to my, my degree at all. Nah. And look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> Famous YouTuber, hitting up metros twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> twice a year. 
classy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so obviously, like after uni finished, there was a lot of partying. Mm. Um, and then yeah, thanks for the invite. Well, you are ten years older than me, <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to get a permission slip every time I hang out with Jesse just yeah. to, for my parents' consent. <laughs> Jesse's my mum's age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he is my dad. Don't do the math on that. <laughs> um, but You're yeah. closer to UCAT's age than you are mine. Hey? You're closer to UCAT's age than you are mine. Yeah, shout yeah, out to UCAT. Significantly. We come, come see you in Bunnings that day. Yeah. Nice little surprise. That was a little surprise. UCAT is taller than I expected. Yeah, he's um really got into the crux of puberty. <laughs> <laughs> he actually has though. He's gonna grow. I'm trying to get him to go to the gym. His voice and, has gotten deeper. Yep, yeah. content's getting better. I uh, he gave me a tour through his house. Oh really? And um yep, yeah, saw the little UCAT lab. Oh that's cool. sick. Got like he a full does? PC set up, Wi-Fi in there, buddy. Desk, green screen. He's got the lot, mate. Little buddy. I don't know what are they called the um road. Pod, uh, the live stream things mm. when you can just like change the live stream scores and everything. I'm not professional enough to know what any of that Mate, is. Mate, you, you cat will be the YouTuber on the rise this year. You watch, you'll be Cardman levels. It kind of was last year. Mm. I mean, it well, Cardman. Cardman was on his own level, but um, but you cat had a big year. Mm. Big year. Yeah. Yeah. You cat had a, a 2020 Druzy, I reckon, last year. And Ooh. Yeah, not, nothing crazy, but next year he's going to have a... Or this year he's going to have a, a 2021 UCAT. Uh, 2021 card, man. <laughs> I mean... No, because he's, he's, a, a he's at like... 2022 UCAT year, yeah. He's um at about 3.5k subs, I think. Pretty now. Wild, hey. Yeah, and that's where I was at the end of 2020, uh, I believe. Yeah. So, suck my balls. That was an accurate <laughs> statement. <laughs> Anyhow. Yeah. Discipline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... I remember you, Cat, when he came to Bunny, said he um, was feeling a bit of burnout. Did you feel a bit of burnout last year? Burnout. Um, only in my, my Forby. Just doing heaps of skids and that. Subscribe to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, did I feel burnout? No, it's just a bit, bit more uncertainty because I don't know how much I can commit to YouTube mm. like this year, which is a bit of a, a pain and a blessing at the same time. Because it's like opportunities are opening, mm -hmm. but some are closing. And that grey area, which I thought would have been cleared up by now, is still very Fifty Shades of Grey, if you will. Yeah, so. it's been a weird summer. Like, I've been, like, super motivated and I've been messaging, like, when are we going to make videos? When are we going to make videos? And you're just like, I don't know, man. i got other opportunities. <laughs> that is not true. I've been trying to drag Jesse to film all over summer. Um, but no, we're here now, so that's all, all that matters. For the first time, um, and we're all over the place in this pod, but <laughs> for the first time this summer, I actually made a video and then never uploaded it. I've never done really? that before. Yeah. What did you feel? <laughs> AFL uh, episode one. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> When's uh, that coming I out? I just deleted it off then to make room for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you just deleted it. The thing is, if you commit to one, you got to commit to like, you know, a whole... 23. 20 episodes, yeah, yeah, 20 episodes, whatever. Yeah, it's an audacious yeah. sort of thing. It's like getting a home loan. Making a exactly AFL like career uh, series. <laughs> yeah, it's like having a mortgage. Um, but you alluded to some opportunities, Jersey. Ah, rats, um, here we go. This is stuff you've been a little bit quiet on uh, publicly mm. because you don't want to uh, compromise your professional image. <laughs> oh, God. I wonder what that's like. But um, <laughs> tell us what you're alluding to. What, what's, what sort of opportunities have you come across? So all of last year, I was doing a lot of prac. Mm -hmm. So got to work with the State Academy, which is cool. Um, just let me preface this by saying my views and thoughts and what I say is not the view of anything or any company that I represent. Professionalism, covering our bases. <laughs> um, so yeah, got experience in there and then through that just got linked up with the uh, the Perth Demons Talent Manager mm -hmm. and they were like, our futures program needs an S&C coach. Would you like to, to do it? I'm like, hell yeah. So so just going back to the academy stuff, so you were actually involved with uh, the like the... Boys and girls, right? Mm -hmm. That played for Western Australia in the yeah. 17s and 19s, right? So you were you were there for the grand final uh, curtain raiser, right? Yeah. So the, all the kids that got drafted, you you knew them, right? Uh yeah. More so the 17s boys because yeah. I was with them for like months and months. Mm -hmm. Um, with the 19s, my like I wasn't there as much because I had to do another placement, just uni stuff. Um, but yeah, 17s boys more so. Um, but yeah, under 15s girls as well, under 17s girls up to the 19s and then 17s and 19s boys. Mm. So yeah, anyone in the state academy, 
probably saw my face at some point, I reckon. What, so, yeah, with Perth, so what, what exactly does that uh, arrangement look like? So, Perth, the Waffle Club for all the, you know, Victorian, et cetera, mm-hmm. Victorian, et cetera, <laughs> uh, non-West Australian viewers of this, um, Perth are a Waffle Club. So, what exactly are you doing for them? So, I'm the strength and conditioning coach. So, basically, pre-season fitness, just making them run, just blowing a whistle and saying, run! Had a beach session last week. And um, yeah, there was six yaks, so doing my job well, yeah, wow. which is good. They're not native to Australia. <laughs> what yaks? <laughs> I meant vomits. Yeah, you get I what did. I mean. Yeah, I did. Um, but yeah, like um, if any boys want like a gym program or whatever, hook that up for them. If there's any players coming back from injury and rehab and whatnot, I just make sure that they're on track and whatnot. Obviously, I'm not a physio, so I can't like diagnose and whatnot. So pretty much a physio says this is what you can't do. And the strength and conditioning coach says, this is what we can do to get you back sort of thing. Mm. Um, so just that. And yeah, just trying to build a bit of mental resilience really, mm. which is good. It's coming along well, actually. It's cool to see like your YouTube stuff and your actual career kind of meet in the middle, isn't it? Yeah, like, but it's, it's, sort of, bizarre. it's sort of getting in the way. They're, they're mm. button heads at this point. Mm. Um, but yeah, shout out to any of the, the Perth lads if they're watching. Shout out to the Red Legs. Um, I'm actually a Perth fan. Yes. That makes us both, buddy. <laughs> I was a Peel fan, but... Um, yeah. yeah, true. You might as well switch now. Yeah. You did yeah. do a bit of work at Peel, though, didn't you? Yeah, like I did a, trainer stuff at yeah, Peel, yeah, which yeah. is just, yeah, sort of shit kicker stuff, but mm. yeah. Um, but you're actually in the industry, which makes one of us, which is cool. Yes. That's cool. <laughs> You'll get there, buddy, one day. <laughs> we both will. We're going to make it, buddy. Sure. Um, where was I going with that? Perth, Perth, Perth. Oh, yeah. The, the good thing, the difference between being at the, the State Academy and Perth <laughs> is like obviously the state academy is like higher level it's like the level above the mm. waffle sort of below the afl but feeds into the afl so it's very like um you can't reveal much at all like mm. i did one video on working at the state academy if i was able to like do what i wanted to do and do like goal kicking challenges or podcasts with all those players i would have had like so much more growth last year mm. just from yeah filming with all the boys that could get drafted and girls um but at perth like it's more celebrated sort of thing. So at the state Academy, they're like, Oh, turn that down, turn that down. But at Perth, they're like, yeah, get me on, get me on. Like everyone wants to get on. Everyone's like gassing me up a bit, which is a lot nicer than sort of having to hide it and be yeah, quiet about it. It's a, it's a weird dynamic because I'd love for both to just take off and feed into each other. Um, but it's just like, yeah, I feel like my growth being stunted a bit in, in some regard. Yeah, I can imagine the frustration because you sort of build like an image of what you what your career to look like and how that intertwines with making content and stuff mm. like that as well. And only to get there and then it's like, well, actually you, you can't, you have to tr- tr- like tread around certain lines if you're going to make content at all. Yeah. Um, the AFL, like this is not a criticism, it's just an observation, is a very brand focused yeah, it's very corporate. Industry. Yeah, it is, um, which makes it a little bit awkward for guys like you and me. Mm-hmm. I would you say as well this had an impact on just the other content you were making as well in terms of the way you wanted it to yeah. come across? Well, um, one of my favorite videos <laughs> and one of my more popular videos that I ever released, uh, Abusing St. Kilda Fans, yeah. um, got found. Mm. Um, Isn't, wasn't that one of the more popular videos? So if somebody searched Druzy, that it would have been one of the first to come up. Yeah. So that was like my fifth video and it had like 10K views. Mm. And I, <laughs> I'd pay for 10K views at this <laughs> point. Um, but yeah, it's just like the profanity and stuff and mm. it portrays a bad image. I just think people, like, I don't know, take a joke, man. I'm not trying mm. to cause harm here. Yeah. Like, but yeah, is what it is. I suppose. I, I guess in the, you know, this, the academy side of things, it's you're, you're sort of dealing with um, prospective AFL players as well. So mm. it's their brand as well, you got to think about. So I, I guess that's where they're coming from. But just yeah. in general, the AFL industry is sanitized quite a lot. Like even my content, mm-hmm. um, it's kind of all over the place in that like, it's serious like 80% of the time. It's really ridiculous 80. 15% of the time. <laughs> and then the other 5% it's me talking about Dutch butthole. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's something I really should be careful with. and What? You reckon you should tone back the Dutch buttholes? Like, you should work... Do you reckon it's the first time anyone said that sentence before? Maybe. <laughs> you should tone down the Dutch butthole. <laughs> um, what? So you're, you're saying you should go from 80% to 100% mm. instead of going, like, 10%, toning that down and having you as more of a personality. Because at the end of the day, there's only so many list videos that you can do. Like, Caden, Caden McDonald. Yes, Ga- believe me. <laughs> Caden has made his channel off being himself. Yeah. Same as Cardman, same as Mitch yeah. Ryan. Like, um, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, when we started True Footy, we were, the true, apart from being a nod to True Geordie, was to represent authenticity mm. because it wanted we wanted to be like a true experience uh, from a fan's perspective. Genuine. Yeah. So um, it, we've always wanted to be true to that and that's uh, pun intended. And, um, and in that, you know, we will make the sort of jokes that a 28-year-old will make around his yeah. male friends. <laughs> 28. Know. Yeah, yeah. I reckon you got the mental age of a 19-year-old. Thanks, buddy. You Thank did you. say that once on a video. I did say that, yeah. Nah. But the body of a 45-year-old. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm getting that way. Um, but, yeah, so there, there's the, um, the desire to stay like that. But I also think that if... I was unlucky and, you know, someone from the AFL was looking at my content. It wouldn't take them too long to find something that they think is fucked up. <laughs> I don't know. Your content's pretty clean, man. Like, if someone was yeah, getting the... The, the other end, of, like, the, the 5% is extremely... You'd have to dig pretty deep to find stuff like that. Yeah. But, like, if they're going to try and find a reason for you to not make it, like, oh, it, it does my head in a little bit. Like, this isn't a criticism, it's just a... <laughs> yeah. Um, like, as you were saying about the AFL being, like, very corporate and sanitised and stuff like that, like, the AFL, like, owns sort of all the clubs, right? Mm. Like, so you can't have Frio go do a deal with another brand and then profit yeah. off that as a club. Like, in the Premier League, if you want to collab with whoever, you can just go do that and mm. generate profits for your club. Whereas in the AFL, it all is within the system. It's That's all right. it's funding more itself. Sort of set up. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to like a free market, not to make it political, but it, it is like. Um, so Jack there's, Darling. There's literally, <laughs> <laughs> there's literally like equalize, equalization measures in place. Um, not to get too far on a tangent, but uh, yeah, that's true. So. Um, there, there are opportunities out there. Like, look at Caden. He's he's mm -hmm. had his opportunities. He's um he's killing it. Uh, but if you look at his brand, he doesn't really stray from mm. like he is himself. But he's, he's also very M PG M. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I wouldn't say I'm like that. You have M M A fifteen. Yeah, I'd say um yeah more yeah. Mm. Sometimes more Bush MA15, threatens though. to make it X rated. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, yeah. He's meant to be here, but he's uh yeah his yeah his indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> The funny thing about Bush is I don't know if how many people realise, but his indigestion is so bad that like <laughs> just outing just, himself. Yeah. He's the only person I know that he'll just be sitting there and he'll just be like, oh. <laughs> like in pain out of nowhere. And he'll be like, Are you gonna get that fixed? And he's like, Yeah, should do. <laughs> have another thing a stack of that <laughs> Stop the rumbling. I'm sure he won't mind me saying that. But he uh, he got the ferry back from Rotnest, which is an island uh, here in Western Australia and um Let's just say he's uh, he's ruined for a few days. <laughs> Let's just say his nest is rotting. <laughs> <laughs> Content. Well, that was a conversation killer. But um, no, nah, it'd that? be it'd be good to see the AFL be more open and mm. trying to expand into different areas. Like, obviously, it's um, like we've seen the Premier League has taken off massively from all the social media influences and mm. personalities over there. I swear we've spoken about this before on a podcast, but like. I don't know, just expand, try to grow as a corporation instead of just keeping it all internal. Mm. Like, they're doing good things. They're heading in the right direction, but I think it could really, boom, yeah. if they, um, yeah. Well, COVID's a big factor in that, right? So, like, yeah. half the industry got decimated when COVID hit in 2020, and they're, they're kind of rebuilding from that. Like, we know um, of a certain someone who had, like, a, a really golden opportunity. I think I think Caden even talked about it on my yeah. podcast, so I think I can say it, but he had a, he had a prime opportunity with the club he loves. Mm -hmm. Um that just got dashed at the last minute. Mm. So these opportunities are there, but then, you know, the industry kind of kind of died. I remember sure emailing... Are, well, hey? <laughs> I said, sure are, buddy. I remember emailing West Coast. I just got motivated one day and I was like, look, is there anything you can do for me? Can I do anything with you? And then lockdown in yeah. Perth one hour after that. <laughs> so your hopes and dreams are shattered. Yeah, and no, I've never... Never even thought about it since. <laughs> yeah, no, it does throw a spanner in the works, the old the old COVID, unfortunately. Yeah, but uh, hopefully we're past that a little bit. It's going to be... No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have I not even started. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, but I mean, with respect to the AFL, like, what do you what do you reckon this season's going to be like? Um, It will be the a test of... question to answer, I know. It'll be a test of club squad depth, which is going to be massive. So what, what clubs have the, the best squad depth? Like Geelong, maybe... Uh, yeah, dogs. I guess so. Team. You never really know until it gets tested. Mm. Um, I think yeah, like Port Adelaide, Sydney, Melbourne. These. I know Melbourne had a really, really good injury run. 
yeah. this year. They've lost their S and C coach, which is was a, a very important coach to have in your team. Burgess, he's going to the Adelaide Crows. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So that's going to be a bit of a factor as well. But it's yeah. going to be the team with the best squad depth, which is um, I was keen to see Luke Valente play this year for Frio because he's never had that opportunity. He would have had it this year because mm. players are going to get COVID and have to miss games. Um, but yeah, obviously he retired. So I think yeah, AFL this year it'll be squad depth, and this sounds stupid but whatever team gets the most COVID earlier in the season will be the best team in the long run I'm telling you right now for real cop COVID in like round 9 round 10 around that time like right when we're trying to get into some form or something like that and it'll just shit our season up the wall I'm pretty sure like Carlton and Sydney have already had COVID yeah um, there'd probably be some other Victorian I'd imagine so well. yeah, I'd imagine so yeah I don't I don't know how much would get reported to be honest but uh, if, I think I reckon a fair few to be honest yeah a few more than that uh, so it does, not to make excuse for our clubs, but it does put the WA clubs, in theory, uh, potentially behind the eight ball in that yeah. sense because the worst is yet to come. For sure. Um, and then there's a possibility the West Australian clubs will have to uh, um, hub as well. I don't know if that will happen though. Mm. It really depends because I don't know if um, people over east are keeping track, but we've kept our borders shut after Feb 5, which was originally when we were going to open it up, even internationally. Uh, and at the moment, we're still shut our borders, which means... Indefinitely. Clubs. Indefinitely, that's right. There's a little bit of talk it might be March, but if it's not, that's when our boys will have to head over. To be honest, I reckon McGowan's a footy fan and he'll want to see like Optus thriving. You know yeah. what I mean? I, yeah. I, don't, I think he'll... Yeah, once footy season starts, he's like, all right, our priorities are footy. Let's yeah. get the footy going. Um, yeah. Obviously, had the grand final here and like hubbed teams True. over here as well. So, mm. yeah, I think he's not sort of blunt to the idea of having AFL games here like he was the Ashes yeah. sort of thing. I'm reluctant to make this covid uh, just because it's such a political shitstorm, but you do kind of wonder, like, what more will it take to open the borders? Because, you know, like... <laughs> yeah, I'm not I mean, gonna... we said that after the third dose. <laughs> He's just yeah. not, not getting involved. Like, I, I could sit here and speak about it all day long, but... Mm. Um, yeah, I will. Yeah, <laughs> you've got some uh, strong views on it, but um, I, I, I think I think we're reaching the point where it's there's no point delaying any further. To it's be been, yeah, yeah, it's been like that for a while. Dose. So I think it will happen, um, and hopefully for our sakes, uh, personally, and for our clubs, uh, it's before March twentieth or whatever. I think it will be. Yeah, me too. Yeah, who have you got? Who's three man? I got in round one. Adelaide, maybe. Right. Let me double check that. Yeah. Okay. Um, feel like I'm not actually Adelaide. that invested in the answer. That's okay. <laughs> it's just kind of filler. No, I sort of am. Yeah, Adelaide away. Yep. And then first home game is the Saints. That'll be a tough test. Yes. Yeah, can't wait. How are you feeling about Frio this year? Um, we're on the up. We we climb very slowly. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of teams <laughs> trying to recall my uh, thoughts and what I'd always say on every episode of the Drew Footy Man, Show every week. How hard is it to remember anything from last year? Yeah, but we were on it. Though. I know. But <laughs> it's it's like for an exam, like when I study for a unit and I, um, you know, study all the way through the year, the minute I finish that exam, it, I'm done. And Go it's on. been months. Like I, I remember Melbourne's good. <laughs> um, beyond that, I'm struggling. Yeah. I'm struggling a little bit. Um, But... What I do remember is the top six were the clear top six and then the seventh and eighth spot, who was at Essendon and GWS? Essendon made it, GWS made it. That's right, yep. yeah. Yeah, so though, so that that's the spots that are always going to be up for grabs. Mm. Um, well, there'll, there'll be someone to fall out of the top eight. Yeah, there will be. But I th- we, even top four, maybe. Um, I think Freo are going to push the top eight this year. Um, and, like, we have the best young list in the competition. There's no denying that at this point. Like, we have, I think the youngest if not one of the youngest lists in the comp and we finished what 11th mm. 10th but like played some good footy at times last year it's just like consistency like it's always been said like we'll rock up one week and play well and then the next week just fall to shit so um but nah i reckon we're moving in the right direction it's gonna be a, an exciting year that's good i'm a more optimistic eagles fan than many others this year and I, I like this. I like this little groove we've fallen into now, where everyone is riding off the Eagles, because this is where we always excel. You reckon? Every time, every time. Yeah. Remember, remember the preseason right before we won the premiership? Robert Wall said we win the spoon, and that was not a massively unpopular opinion. And really, that's not enough evidence to suggest this is going to be the same. But I just don't think the reasons for a drop off are that strong. To be what are the reasons for a drop off, and why do you think they're false? I think people 
Uh, don't get me wrong, the football we played last year was terrible. But I think ha! it is possible there are extenuating circumstances there. That's my optimistic view. Mm. Okay, I think fitness was terrible. I think the game plan was terrible. Injuries didn't help. They weren't the excuse. But uh, I just don't, I don't think we trained hard enough. There was, a talk, there was talk about um, our fitness base and how there's too many players on individual programs, whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you can really talk with shit about, you know, oh, I heard this about the club <laughs> and it make your case. But I, I, I think people assume that age is the factor. And I just don't think that's the case because mm. um, some of our best players were the senior players last year and it was structural that were the problems. Yeah, okay. There is a fairly big elephant in the room though <laughs> and this will kind of cycle back to the conversation we were just having a minute ago with Jack Darling opting not to have been vaccinated yet. Mm. Um, and of course, it's mandated that he has to have been double vaccinated by that date, uh, late Jan, Jan 31st or whatever probably earlier than that, to, uh, to resume training and playing with the West Coast Eagles. What did you think when you heard this story? Mad respect to Jack Darling for sticking to his guns and, yeah, not falling to, uh, yeah, given his morals and whatnot. If you don't want to get vaccinated, you it's shouldn't your, have it's to. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's your I, choice. I, I totally get that view. Um, and again, we'll, we'll strike carefully here because it's <laughs> a political thing that I know no matter what we say will piss people off. Uh, but, I mean, I would... Regardless of the mandate, I'd be double vaccinated. Mm. So, I don't know. Uh, the, the reason <laughs> I brought it up is actually not too much to, to sort of cast us. It's going to be an issue for the Eagles this year because yeah, he's a vital no, that's player. That's more the angle to <laughs> show down. I, I don't really have any ill feeling towards Darling. The, the interesting thing with it, right, is the way it played out was quite strange. Like, I think Ryan Daniels might have reported it and then the Eagles made a statement. Mm. And then Jack Darling's come out and put an Instagram story up saying uh, kind of... Su- almost suggesting that he's got a workplace injury. He didn't say like injury. He said workplace injury, which is weird. Yeah, right. I don't know why he phrased it like that. Almost as though it's like legal talk. Like you know a what I mean? loophole or something. Yeah, that it, it was to... strange. Yeah. Um, and it almost, you'd almost think looking at that, oh, hang on, it's got nothing to do with the double vax. He's mm. just not, he's just injured. But this was after the Eagles made a statement saying that Jack Darling is not vaccinated <laughs> and cannot return to play for the Eagles. So, it was almost like he kind of took issue with the way it was reported and mm. put up his own story. Right. But had no effect because the media statement was <laughs> out there. Um, but the thing I found interesting is that he is currently, he hasn't retired. Mm. Okay. Liam Jones retired because he was against... I'm pretty sure he said he'd come back and play if he could. Who? Liam Jones. Did he not say he that? retired, I believe. I yeah, could be wrong. Okay. They reported his retirement, I'm sure. Yeah, right. Anyway. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, either way, Jack Darling's still like he hasn't retired, mm-hmm. which you'd think if you are so vehemently against the mandate, you would just say, no, not for me, right? You wouldn't mm. just hang around. And then there's the other school of thought that, uh, well, the rumor that he's waiting for Novavax. Mm. But again, I feel like I feel like they could have, it would have been a slam dunk for them to say that at the time. Maybe that's too personal. Yeah. Do you think it's too personal? Yeah. That's right. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, yeah, I think like a lot of people is just sort of waiting for it to all blow over. Like, um, I don't know, you, you, you speak to, you, you speak to people that, I don't know, again, we're delving into it, but like the, um, the Omicron variant or whatever, mm. like runny nose, sore throat, headache. How many times in the last year have you had a runny nose, sore throat and a headache? Uh, touch wood, I've been good for a year, but before yeah. that I had a brutal flu. You said you were sick last Saturday. Yeah, it wasn't the flu. Were you feeling your pants? Peruvian butt flu. No, nah, I was just, just that well. <laughs> yeah, okay. But it wasn't diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> Get that image out of your head, kid. Um, but yeah, I think like, I don't know, Australia is a lot different, but countries like Denmark, moving on with it, UK dropped all their restrictions and stuff like that. They sort of realise that it's not going to have a massive effect. Obviously, the vaccine doesn't stop the spread. That's scientific fact. That's not mm. cons- conspiracy. So if, um, yeah, if the politics start to think maybe it's not as bad as I think it is, uh, as they think it is, maybe next season it might be lifted and he might be able to play again. Yeah, that, I guess that's possible. Yeah, he's only 30 next year. or 30, No, he's 30 this year because, fuck, I'm 29 this year. Um, that's <laughs> oh, midlife crisis. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do get the feeling Darling can play for another five years, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I, I, did you just see him? He's that durable sort of player that doesn't seem like he's anywhere near the end. Doesn't, yeah, he doesn't, doesn't seem like he's on his decline yet. Doesn't rely on athleticism, playing at a steady sort of rate of produ- production. So... Yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. Um, but what was significant, kind of, is that the Eagles are training uh, an extra two key forwards as their train-on players for mm. you know the supplemental list 
a thing that you can sign new players up. Who's that? Uh, one was Kaitel and uh, the other one escapes me. Was it Kate Dittmar? Uh, he was already training with us, but I think yeah. his, pe- his period with us ended. Okay. He followed me on TikTok. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Shout out, Caden. I'm sure he's not watching this. Um, but, yeah, so it, it does signal intent for the Eagles to add another key forward to their list, which is a little mm-hmm. bit ominous. But. Back to the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Um, do you not just think, like, Shuey's at the end, sort of Hearn's getting there, Gaff isn't as effective as he used to be, um, what, all your other old ones. McGovern always <laughs> seems to be out. Brad Shepard, one of your more well, effective gone, players. Yeah. Like, Dom Sheed gets the ball a lot, but he's really not that effective with it. Um, I can and think- just given last year, it's like, do you expect... What do you think would be more plausible? You making the top eight or you not making the top eight? I, I just... I think the arguments for us falling out of the eight are fine, like sound. Like mm. I don't, I don't think anyone's silly for suggesting that. I just, I, I just believe, I, I believe that there's a, there's a sort of rebuttal for all of those things you said. So, um, okay, Shepard retiring. I, I think, I think medium defenders is something we're not really short on. Uh, Hearn played really well last year. I don't think sure he's near the end. It's just a case of his body breaking down, but. I mean, people have had two years of no football and then come back and played well. Like, even he's done that. Yeah, soft tissue stuff's a bit dicky. I know, I know. But until I'm not going to believe that until he's gone. Yeah. Uh, when he plays, he's been best on ground in, like, multiple games he played last year, and he's mm-hmm. only played seven games in two years. Yeah. Gaff and seven Pete, in two years. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's not great, I know. But um, <laughs> He'll be back. I, I think in terms of how well he plays, he's got several years left. Mm. It's just a case of whether he can be bothered rehabbing all the time. I'm sure he would be, yeah, spending all yeah. this summer rehabbing. That's right. I mean, look, if Shui, Shui doesn't play much footy this year, that's a big blow, definitely. Mm. Uh, Gaff and Sheed, I just reckon that's more of a structural thing. I think Sheed played injured at the end of last year. Again, this is all stuff we can all say about our own club that sound like excuses. But, but playing with a knock, not playing to his full capacity. Well, he played well in the first half of the year and then he became ultra terrible. Mm. Like in the last game of the year, it was obvious. I'm not even going to defend that. I just, I, I think Gaff's its role and Sheed was potentially injury. So I, I just, I just think with fitness, we'll, we'll come out and we'll still be a hard team to beat at home. Mm-hmm. And I think we'll play finals. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not going to say any hard. It's though. a make or break season though, right? I think I agree with that. In, in my mind anyway, obviously I don't follow West Coast as hard as most people, but um, yeah, you, you make the eight and you sort of got one more premiership push mm. somewhat in you. Um, but if you sort of have a stinking season and let's just say Simpson gets sacked and you lose, I don't know, or you win like five games all season or something like that and the culture just falls apart and it's just like a Collingwood-type situation, could be a rebuild station. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I, I don't believe it will happen, but I, I think that's possible. Excuse mm-hmm. my voice break there. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got a few players touch and go who might be sort of pushed into retirement. Um, Hearn, Kennedy... Um, I, I think Nat's got plenty to go. I don't think he'll retire or anything like that. Gaff's still got like a three-year deal, I think. Um, Your draft choices this year were very bold and obscure. Mm. Like when you have Matthew Johnson on the table, like best on ground in the... Although, yeah, you can't really read too much into matches, I suppose, like individual games. But yeah, Matt Johnson was touted as like a top 10 pick potentially. People were talking about Frio taking him with the 8th or 10th pick. And then he slips all the way until the second round. West Coast have a chance to get him, and they get that Chester. Chester. Yeah. Chester. Chester. Yeah, I I can't sit here and like say no, you're wrong because I said all that exact same stuff yeah. after the draft. Uh, it's just obscure. I'm not saying these plays won't work. No, out. they are obscure. But again, I think it's a compromised draft pool. There's no doubt about that. Mm. So everyone, I think it's more you're going to have more subjective ratings of the draft than ever. Can I you think. remember any drafts where West Coast drafted obscure and it paid off? Off the top of your head? Hmm. Off the top of my head's rough. I know. I can certainly think of ones where it's gone badly. <laughs> uh, Great. Shit. I mean, we took Brass late in 2013. That wasn't really obscure. But like any early uh, picks? Who, who was oh, your... You, you know, oh, I mean, McGovern was obscure. Yeah. He was a rookie from a fat country kid from Albany. Harry yeah. Edwards, again, um, just got a three-year deal. Kind of obscure. Um... But in terms of like, yeah, having that like, I don't know, like players rank so highly and having the opportunity to take them and just be like, nah, we yeah. see a lot in this kid. It's so. probably the, the one of the biggest draft surprise, well, not surprises because it was kind of rev, uh, revealed first, but what, yeah, one of the harder to get my head around immediately mm. just because it's so uncon- uh, unconventionally risky from West Coast. Mm. So I can't deny that. But the thing I like about him is that things we criticize the Eagles for as fans 
previously was picking the safe WA kid. Like mm. that was the narrative when you drafted Sheed. Yeah. Ended up, that's a great pick, mm-hmm. admittedly. Um, but if you, yeah, p- picking Johnson would have in theory been the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, it just comes down to who they rate and mm-hmm. they must really rate this Chester kid. Yeah. Like, I, I think like the upside there is that he could be like another Shuey, like a leader in terms of attributes, mm. like really fast and quite skillful, explosive style. Yeah. He just hasn't played that much footy. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, I think that the, they sort of, um, live and die by their sword with that. Yeah. Pitch. Like if, I if think Jack happen. Williams will be a great player. I yeah. think he'll be a good forward for you guys for a while. Like mm. at the start of the year, he was touted as, yeah, like the best forward in the draft. Mm. Um, when the state 19s played their first game, I was on the bench and I remember speaking to like the S&C coach and he was like, this kid will be like right up there, mm. like one of the top picks. In the first half of that game, he kicked four goals, mm. like in a state academy game. Um, he was just head and shoulders above everyone that day. Mm. Um, Freo had a pick around that, that pick and we took Eric Benning, um, which is probably good to just increase our rock depth. Um, but I, I wanted Jack Williams. I just wanted that big bodied yeah forward mm. um josh kennedy type and i think yeah him being under josh kennedy and darling although he can't train anymore but like you know the few weeks they had together was good yeah <laughs> like um i think west coast could breed a really good forward for for years to come in jack williams one thing you can't deny is the eagles can really draft key talent mm. like key position talent yeah like we just pluck it from our butt cheeks and like harry edwards like an obscure rookie is was best 22 just about last year mm-hmm. um you know, I guess McGovern was injured, but um, around the mark. And then, um, you know, McGovern himself, Barass, like it doesn't really matter where we draft and they end up good. So mm-hmm. I hope so. I don't have a strong opinion on it yet. I know that he's grown from 194 to 198. So who has Williams? What, in like a couple months? Yeah, yeah. You could you probably question the testing there because I think everyone got a little bit taller than it's their Probably made, cam. did a typo on the, <laughs> on the computer. Uh. 19.4 centimeters. <laughs> Uh, That's what she said. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, enough uh, enough Eagles talk. Um, Dockers talk. Dockers had a great draft. Yeah. 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 No, nah, but yeah, we did though, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you had told me before the draft we'd have Erasmus and Mia St. Johnson, yeah. I, I would have I laughed at you. Yeah, I would have said yeah. you're a bloody dimwit, mate. Yeah. It, like, we, we said it at the time, but I, I do wonder what the knock on Johnson was. Mm. I, I think the only thing is vanilla, but it doesn't mean he won't be a good player. Yeah, well, he sort of replaces, well, it doesn't replace, but, like, he's that Adam Chera body type move sort of similar. Yeah. Um, he really started to blossom at the end of the year as well, so mm. um, maybe some clubs are thinking a bit of recency bias. Is, like, is he that consistent mm. for a long term? Um, but, yeah, like, <laughs> taking him with the 22nd, 21st pick around that I mark. Think it was, yeah. Like, yeah. It's a steal. I was gutted we didn't get Jacob Van Roy in though. I think he's one of the best forwards in the draft. He's at Melbourne now. Mm. Took a big specky in their um, scratchy a week or so ago as well. Yeah, right. Um, I have not even thought about football. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, he played as a defender in the state games um, because they didn't have any key backs. And he was just like, you couldn't tell that he was a key yeah. forward. Like, just could play both ends as well. And then, yeah, played in defense all that game. Goes up forward for the last two minutes of the game and kicks the winning goal mm. um i rated him as much as i did jay amos yeah yeah I, I i've had similar thoughts just on the what limited things i'd seen of him it's pretty wild when a player can play like it's a really good sign when a player can play both ends really well mm-hmm. like uh for us it's oscar allen um yeah. but it's just like we we throw him back we throw him in the ruck uh, i don't know if van Rooyen can ruck but um having that swing man mm-hmm. uh that's massive yeah that's massive i think that's a huge um, feather in his cap fills multiple holes yes but Frio could have so used a player like him like cause we're always getting players that are injured just like a big bodied forward mm. can go back in defence like a Brennan Cox type mm. sort of thing started his career forward and then ended up down in the defence but yeah man I hope Frio can just keep a small injury list this year does my head in it is silly eh like you guys sacked uh uh, I forget the name of the US. Uh, was it SSN? Yeah, no, there? head of high performance. Yeah. What's um, the name? Oh, I can't even. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember. I, I did know it one, once upon a time. Yeah. It's my old age getting to me. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, things didn't improve, which is not a surprise. Yeah. Us, but Definitely. I yeah. think it was just budget cuts or something like that. Yeah. It, he wasn't the, the issue at the club for getting injured. But, like, if we have all of our defenders in, we've got Griffin Logue, Brennan Cox, Luke Ryan, Alex Pierce, Heath Chapman, Hayden Young. 
Brandon Walker had a great season last year. Um, Joel Hamling as well. Like that is a, a thick defense. Yeah, you just have never seen them all play at the same never. time. Never. <laughs> yeah. I remember this season, Griffin Logue. Did I even say Griffin Logue then? Yeah, you did. I, I did. Griffin Logue played with Alex Pierce for the first time. And like wow. they've been on like Griffin Lowe got drafted in what like twenty seven yeah twenty sixteen yeah. Alex Pierce has been on our list probably since twenty fifteen twenty fourteen thirteen even yeah. yeah and first time they played together was twenty twenty one wow yeah I actually think I think of Pierce as an older guy mm. but he's the same age as Barras or Barras how old uh twenty twenty five yeah okay twenty six twenty six yeah yeah it was crazy like I remember seeing him snap his tibia <laughs> at um Subi. And he was just like a fresh face, like oh little, really? Yeah, like short haircut, fresh yeah. face. And he had like a year or two off to rehab that, and then he come back like big beard man, but yeah. complete, complete transformation. Probably one of my least favorite Dockers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's a shame for you, buddy, because yeah. I, I like him a lot. Um, yeah. but yeah, he's always he's just made a glass up, bloke. Yeah, it seems. So. But he's had a good preseason, so fingers crossed he can um stay fit he he said that he doesn't seem like it doesn't seem to affect his confidence i don't know if he was just saying that or whatever mm. um but like yeah the biggest thing like a massive thing with the injuries is are you confident to play do you think your injured section will hold up quadrant <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and he sa- says he doesn't have an issue with that which is yeah. surprising i remember you saying on your tom donks um drew's mm. a yarn which is a little plug for your podcast thanks uh that you think that consciously you feel like you've got the confidence back but then subconsciously at, the t- at times you were like at the gym and you felt like oh I, yeah like, i stopped i hesitated and i'm not really sure yeah like why and i that, think that yeah crazy. you want your rehab to be as smooth sailing as possible like if you have hiccups it'll yeah put doubts in your mind sort of thing mm. yeah yeah so how are, how are you fitness wise now? Because <laughs> you alluded to that a little bit. How, how how do young guys? Because we have a younger audience. Actually, we don't have that younger audience. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, the demographics would surprise you uh, for all the toilet humor. Um, what was your advice for someone like a young skinny rat that wants to get to the gym? Because there would be quite a few younger guys watching this. Get a membership. Number one. Great advice. <laughs> I'll, I'll give Physically you... Physically get to the gym. Yes. That, I'm not even kidding. Yeah, that is the number it. one piece of advice I would give you is to pick up your keys, get in the car, start your car, drive to the gym, walk through the doors, and then you're there. Because that's They're all 15. that... That's what? They're 15 watching this. They can't do that. Get your mum to drive <sighs> you to the gym. <laughs> um, but no, that's what I would always say. Just go. Just get there and go consistently. I started out by going 30 days straight. And if I didn't have that goal, I probably would have stopped in two weeks, three weeks. The, the trickiest thing is to motivate yourself to get up and get in the car. But once you've done Motivation that, is you, fickle. <laughs> you yeah, need yeah. discipline. <sighs> That's literally the book that I read and then started going to the gym though. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, yeah, if you get into the habit of at least getting yourself into the car, then mm. you, you're not going to turn around. No. Because then you'll feel silly. Yes. That would be bad if you got <laughs> halfway to the gym and gave up. But uh, yeah, what about for someone who doesn't have the confidence to in the gym, right? Because this is a thing that I personally never really dealt with i mm. uh, my mom was a personal trainer in her youth so uh like i just grew up knowing how to go to the gym yeah but a lot of people don't have that, be- that mm-hmm. benefit you gotta go with mates i suppose yeah um youtube yeah i, I didn't i've never been with anyone I, yeah that wasn't an issue for me either even though i was like proper anorexic yeah I don't know. Did you not watch like YouTube videos or anything like that? Oh, sure. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like yeah. what exercises and stuff to do. Get a PT and get a program written out for you. Yeah. And you can easily like, you can easily just get a PT for like three sessions. Or a you... free session. First yeah, session I free. Suppose. Yeah, When you like you sign do. up and stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, That's true. But yeah, I don't know. No one at the gym's looking at you. No one's judging you. Like you go into the gym all the time and just see people that are like lifting wrong or whatever. And you don't care about it because you're just focused on what you got to do. Everyone is there to better themselves. They're yeah. not going there to judge you or to flex on other people. They're just trying to boost up themselves. Yeah, that's true. I, I can't I can't think of a time I've ever looked around at the gym and like thought, oh, that's all he's lifting. Never, yeah. Never. Yeah. Probably because I'm weaker than everyone else. <laughs> but it's true though. Like if you, someone's lifting heavy though, you're like, oh, he's lifting heaps heavy. It's rather going to be like he can control the weight or he can't. And if someone's like lifting like a low weight, they're usually doing a like proper form, which mm. is as effective as li- lifting heavy weight with mm. poor form. You know yeah. what I'm saying? True fitness. Subscribe. Another piece of advice I have, which is a little bit obscure. Go to the gym in something you feel good in. 
And I mean, feel like, good? feel like you look good. Yeah. I think that's an important motivator. Yeah. Like personally, like I wear like a, a singlet so I can actually see like things working. It motivates me. Yeah. But I personally like, uh, it's not to show off because I got not much to show off <laughs> anyway. But um, but if I was, you know, wearing, you know, like a baggy t-shirt or whatever, I don't know. I mm. just mentally it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't motivate me in the same way. You need to see the pump. Yeah, you do. I, I don't know. It works for me. And I, I've heard other people say that as well. Yeah. Get some good tunes on the way to the gym in the car oh, yeah. as well. I, sometimes I look that. forward to the gym when I have new music to listen to. Yeah, that, true. That's cool. Yeah. I've been heaps into the gym lately. Yeah? Been going like six, seven days a week. Sick. Yeah. I'm injured Discipline. at the moment, but <laughs> discipline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tried cutting. Like I tried because I'm, I'm a bit of a fat fuck at the moment. But <laughs> I'm trying to, um, trying to lose a bit of weight. I just can't. Like I tried for like a month. Did like lost half a kilo and then I just gained it back again. Yeah. And I'm doing like, uh, I know that cardio is not, the, it's, it's about diet, but I've been doing like circuit training and stuff mm. like that. Um, and I'm getting a lot fitter. Like my cardio sucked and it's now only a, mid, a bit sucky. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm doing like circuits, getting through the 45 minute sessions and I'm just getting heavier. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. in theory, I'm gaining a bit of muscle. I don't know. Well. There's a lot of genetic. Like if you're trying to watch what you eat and you're still putting on weight, that's just, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I've never that. been like that before. So I, I think mm. it's like a life stage thing a little bit. Yeah. Like I'm just true. getting that dad, dad bod to yeah. speak a little bit. Last time I saw you, you said that you were thinking about going to boxing. Yeah, I know. I've just signed up again. Okay. I'm open to it. But Go you know, on. if we're going to do this fucking YouTube thing again, I'm, gonna have, <laughs> I'm not going to have much time. <laughs> no, nah, we will, buddy. I, I am keen. This okay. YouTube thing again? What, what, what's your plan for this year on YouTube? I was so close Got to, him. <laughs> so close to wrapping it up. <laughs> I don't have a plan for YouTube, mate. Hey, what do you mean? You're Mr. True Footy. Are you, why are you acting shocked? <laughs> I'm just like acting as like the fan yeah. perspective. Yeah. Where, where's your head at with it, buddy? We're here, aren't we? Yeah. Woo! Um, and there goes the audio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, what Jeruzzi is alluding to is that my motivation to come back has not been. You don't there. need motivation. You need. I don't darts. have any discipline. <laughs> <laughs> darts, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, haven't really been feeling it. So basically, Jesse did the old, I wouldn't say quality over quantity quantity over quality approach but you your output was your main driving force towards the end of last year um you were uploading daily for how long like a I month i think i uploaded every day for more than two months and that burnt you out like i remember i'd be out and i'd just like drunk message jesse <laughs> he'd be like haha come to metros haha and you'd be like no buddy i'm at home editing suckling the teat of lady content <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i just think you burnt yourself out and you just need to play with the formula a bit and get it right because there's no point of dropping YouTube at this point. Not that you'd necessarily drop it. You'd probably mm. still run the podcast, but like there's not anyone that makes as good content as you do. And like, it's hard to see that the forest from the trees sort of thing, but like, yeah, your content is like a one it's you Caden Cardman. So, um, <laughs> I appreciate it. I don't agree with that at all. I think I think there's a lot of other people. How many subs have you got? Uh, who cares? No, no I, I just want to know. Seventeen and a half. Seven. You're, you're hitting twenty k this year. Yeah, but who, who cares? It's just like I don't know. You look at Caden where he was when he was at seventeen and a half, and then it's boom. Yeah, and, and he's rising. <laughs> um, but like, there is a cat climbing my couch. Um, and not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> um like i'm i'm all in if i can be um i do respect that about you actually mm. your your desire to keep doing this has never wavered actually yeah well you've been doing it longer for me as well yeah but in the time that i've known you i've like been like this yeah it's just who i am i guess yeah but for me it's not so much i don't know i, I definitely probably did burn myself out but i, I don't know like it, it came to a point where i sort of look back at the year i literally could not have worked any harder mm. and i just thought was the juice really worth the squeeze? Like, was mm. it really worth it? Was it a reward there? Yes. Because the the vision that you have for your channel can become a reality one day. And that yeah. is fact. I don't know. Those visions are fading, though. That's all. Yeah, but... I don't I'm know. Bunnings you... man now, man. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> nah, look. You're 28, 29. 28? 28, you rude bitch. 28, <laughs> right? You, you can't drop this now and fade into being an, a normie with... I mean, you're a great person, but... I definitely can. Nah, 
we don't want that. You're, you're unique. How many people can say they've got a following and they can go into metros and have, have followers come up to them and talk to them? Probably a lot of people with TikTok. Yeah, that's fair. To be honest. TikTok's but the future. Why don't you smash more TikTok? I, I did for like the last little bit, uh, well, the last podcast I did. And mm. I, I think if I do continue making videos, I will probably proportionately spend more time making TikToks. Well, I've been dropping fart bombs on YouTube in terms of views, like getting like 200... Is that a metaphor? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, been getting like, yeah, 200, 300, 400 views a video, which is El Stanko. Like a Drew Footy show would have got a K in a day. Could have gone up to sort of 2K max, but yeah, drop vids that would get 5K, 6K because you have AFL in the title and yeah, it's popping. Mm. Um, but yeah... Druzy yarn, like no one's gonna be clicking on that unless you know me. But like, I got thirty three k, which doesn't sound much on TikTok last month, and like you just oh, run right. that up. Like, mm. yeah, it's just yeah, getting that exposure is the main thing. I think as well, like the conclusion I kind of came to was I, I just don't think there's enough interest on on YouTube and AFL to be honest. But well, if you go on TikTok, they're racking up views like pretty high, and I know it's probably mm-hmm. a little distorted because people are more likely to get an AFL thing if they're not interested in AFL. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't really happen with YouTube as much. Uh, but that's the growth. You've got to appeal to what, what we, the strategy should be is to, to look at, you know, how do we capture the next demographic? You, you look at TikTok, the younger audience, even though I know that's starting to age up as well, but uh, capturing these, these younger kids who... <laughs> <laughs> full <Pulls> up. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes my career in media. <laughs> Rats. Uh, now, nah, ca- ca- sort of engaging them and then sort of <laughs> luring them over to YouTube. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in all seriousness. Capturing their attention with that is, puppies. That is, that is the way to do it. That is literally the Jamo and Dylan model. Yeah. Um, for those who know that, who they are. But Caden did that without TikTok. He no, got no. to 50K without... He's on his own level. Yeah, but nah, everyone can see the potential in you except for you. And that is fact. Yeah. It's it's double layered. It's it, my belief in the potential is lowered, and I also just don't know. You know what it is though. It's because care. you do everything for your channel. Like you, I talked about this on the Jam on Dylan pod that I did with them. But like we got to rock up, set up the audio, which took fucking three hours today. Oh, yeah, dude, set up the cameras, practice, yeah. set up the lighting. You got to go home and edit this for three, four hours. Then you got to make yeah, it. We'll see if it makes it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Like you, you have to do all these things. Like. The way that I don't want to spoil too much, but like Caden will be working with people this year. Like he will have a lot of that done for him. You look in the UK, look at True Geordie. He's got a whole room in his house dedicated with people working. Like there's no way that True Geordie would still be going if he had to make his thumbnails, edit his videos, film his videos and everything like that. You just got to have someone else to bounce off as well as me to, to, to help you grow. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be someone with a, a, a vision of your channel, which you said is starting to fade, but someone with like a fresh vision to come in and help. Yeah. I, so if you want to work at True Footy Enterprises, drop a comment below. I hope you like your zero dollars a year <laughs> annual salary. Yeah. Because well, I can't afford um, anyone. There's a bloke called Bailey who started helping out Caden. Yeah, I remember that actually. Um, and it's done wonders. <laughs> yeah, well, enough about that. Um, what's next on the horizon for you, Drew? Are you doing the podcast right now? Yeah. Uh, that'll how, that'll be that running all year, hopefully. Um, what's just, the, what's just, the vision of the podcast? Just a, it's called the Druzy Yarn, and um, I just like having yarns with people. Everyone has a different perspective on the world and a way of life and a way of thinking, and I'm just going to interview people and, and try to discover that, try to get different perspectives and whatnot. Almost missed out on the weekly upload last week, but I just got Liam, my housemate, in to, mm. to save the app, but next like three or four weeks, I've got a guest on, so That's cool. It's really? Exciting. You've already lined up three to four? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, That's yesterday, I was just sitting there, and I'm like, I hate... Mine got lost in the mail. Like, it's my invite. That's cool. I did ask you months. I've also been on twice. Yeah. (laughs) I think it was going to be like the... Did you ask me? What? Yeah. I think I did. And then I I was like... I don't actually care. I just don't think you did, but... I feel like I would have at one point. But yeah, I was like, I think it was episode five that I was going to get you on, like the return of the Druzy yarn. And I was like, you've literally been on three of <laughs> yeah. the episodes already and you're going to be the, the returning star. Yeah. Uh, but we got Tommy Dunks on. Um, but yeah, keep the, the Druzy yarn going. Um, and as I was saying before about the, this grey area, had a bit of a Caden McDonald situation where got the, the role of my dreams, some would say. Um, From which bakery? Uh yeah. Um, no, nah, so, yeah, through uni, I'm doing another degree this year, an honours degree, and as a sports scientist at a uni that's affiliated with the Dockers, I got a role at Frio, and they were like, yep, you'll be in, like, 
three, four days a week helping out. And I'm like, sick. That's sick. Dream come true. Like, yeah, dope. And then, yeah, the old, everyone's best mate COVID rocked up and yeah, now I can't go in. So I'm going to be doing most of this degree down the corridor. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what's on the cards. Yeah, that, that's the uh, that's amazing. Uh, and in the same breath, it's uh, a bit gut-wrenching. Actually, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like if, yeah, in any other decade, I'd be living out my dreams this year. Yeah. But um, yeah, just doing a bit of data science and sports science. Or, are you allowed to say what you're doing or is that... Yeah, um, yeah I, don't, I don't know how much I can say. Yeah. Or I'll just say like goal kicking analysis. Yeah. That's, that's so, what yeah. it is. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is it hard to believe that you've kind of like weaseled your... <laughs> not weaseled, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's is, is it kind of, the back is it, door. How do you reflect on the fact that you just it's just started to happen? What just what being it for you? Oh, your, your vision over like the last few years of what you wanted your career in YouTube to, to be. As your attention goes, so, so shall you become Jesse. I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah, that's what? why I'm thriving. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like if if you have that mindset of oh my channel sucks, your channel's gonna suck. If you're like I'm gonna make my channel great, your channel will be great. It's just yeah, just having the right mindset towards things and yeah, like you, things really aren't that achievable if you work towards them. And it helps that Frio were affiliated with Curtin. But like mm. YouTube, I yeah, when I started that, I didn't want to just have 200, 300 subs. I wanted to grow the channel and it, and it grew. Um, and then, yeah, like um, growing up, I always said I wanted to be a commentator, which is why I started my channel. And I always had people saying like, oh, you got to, it's, it's a who you know industry. It's not what you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, which is to a degree true, but like we've done pretty well just off our own backs doing what we've done so far. Um and I'll, yeah, work through that. But yeah, like same thing. Like lots of people would look at sports science as a industry where you struggle to work your way up. But I don't know if this sounds cocky or arrogant, but I'm 20 years old, worked at Peel Thunder, State Academy, Perth Demons. And now I've got like somewhat of a gig at Frio. Um, it's not that unachievable. You just got to work hard towards it and... Um, yeah, spend every day getting 1% better. In a year's time, you'll be 365% better, mate. <laughs> so, <laughs> be 3.65 times the man. <laughs> but you, you can wake up and have days where you um, do the same thing. You can repeat every day over and over and over and then you just get lost in time because every day is the same or you can you can evolve, mate. Mm. You've got to work towards something. Write down what you want to do that day to be better. And yeah, it's held me in good stead so far and I've always just followed what I wanted to do. Like I've said since I was a kid, I'll only work a job that I'm passionate about and that has stayed thick. So that's the plan for this year. Hopefully, uh, yeah, my role at Frio won't interfere with YouTube. In an ideal world, I'll be able to do everything that I did this year, last year, in 2021 on YouTube. Alone. No. Sorry, continue, continue. Um, but that, that's the grey area for, yeah, those wondering if I'll be able to smash YouTube this year. It's like, will the Frio role hinder that? Because mm. obviously... Well, the thing was, if I was going to be there, I couldn't do it, which is fair enough because mm. I'd see the insides of what's right. happening and whatnot. Yeah, okay. But now I'm not there. I don't have that exposure to what's yeah. going on at the club. So yeah. It makes sense. You'd have to be discreet about the stuff you're, you're doing, obviously. Mm. Um, yeah, that, that all makes sense. But yeah, no, hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. I can... In an ideal world, if I can't go into the club, which it's not looking like I will be able to, I'll be on YouTube... I'll be on YouTube less because I'll have to do this degree and it's a buttload of work. Mm. Um, but yeah, in an ideal world, there'll be a Drew footy show, a Drew Zian, maybe a match day vlog every week. That's cool, mate. With that in mind, who do you want to be? Where do you want to be in 365 days from now? England. Yeah. <laughs> lads, 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 lads. <laughs> I'm moving to England as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. You coming? Uh, why, why don't you go traveling? Discover yourself. Are you joking? Why not? Because of COVID? No, you can... Oh, you mean in the future? Oh, no, yeah, like, 100% I want to go traveling. This yeah. year, you could go over to England now. They've, uh, as I said, yeah. dropped their restrictions. You can travel in Europe now. Well, Dylan wants to move there next year, so maybe. Yeah, sick. Maybe, yeah. I'll see you over Just there. Just as you try to talk me into a YouTube career on the <laughs> AFL. <laughs> but, um... Move to the UK. Yeah, well, I don't know if I'll still do... AFL YouTube stuff over there. I don't know what I'm going to do, but... Yeah, you, you've said for a while that you don't intend to do it that long. Yeah, I'll, I'll see what happens. I It'd be sick to get like an online business up and going, like strength and conditioning stuff, online coaching, just 
That's sort another of, thing that you got going is that you actually have something you can offer, mm. which I've struggled with. <laughs> I don't, I don't. But um, Lost patience are just the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but that's cool. I definitely think you should do that. To mm. be honest, like yeah. specifically for like young uh, football athletes mm-hmm. um, and also soccer athletes. As yeah, well, potentially boxing as well. Yeah, big, true. big fan of that. True. Um, you follow Prime Train, hey? Yeah, discovered him this week. Like that sort of model, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, not body. Do you know Body Magic? Model. Yeah, I know of him, yeah. Sort of like that sort of stuff. I, yeah. I like working with uh, youth athletes as well because their brains are still malleable. Mm. Like, you can teach them a lot and they'll take a lot on board. Sure. Whereas, like, I don't know, sort of... I've enjoyed the academy process because you have a much bigger influence on their future as opposed to working with them at 25 or whatever yeah. and they're, they're already set in their way sort of thing. Yeah, very true. Um, which is, yeah, I like it. I yeah. like working with the academy and futures level. It's probably why you don't get a lot of um, mature age athletes drafted, right? Like mm. a little bit more than they used to. But yeah. uh, I think that's the same co- concept. You can like mold that player into what you want them to become. That's right. And I think they say like, if you can't kick by 16 or 18 or something like that, you'll never be able to kick well. Mm. Um, you know, so that's a little add on to your point. <laughs> <laughs> now that's cool, man. It sounds like the, uh, the future is very exciting. And um, as a friend, congrats. It's been, it's been awesome to see you sort of succeed while I've been <laughs> bubbling away in my pit of depression. <laughs> Shut up, bro. I wouldn't be where I am right oh, now if I it was wasn't for you. Sincere. That is not true at all. Shut up. Yes, it is. I'll, I would be on like 3,000 subs. I don't don't give me true. a compliment without complimenting yourself. <laughs> no, honestly, though. I don't think that's true at all. You've taught me so much about YouTube and the algorithm and everything. And yeah, okay. Okay, titles. I won't, I won't and argue with you. But I don't think, I think you're selling yourself short there. But. No, you've been a good mentor for me, Jess Debarn. And that's going to continue this year when the Drill Footy Show returns. And Jesse is motivated. Yeah, I can't wait for that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, nah, leave, leave Australia this year and then hopefully get this model and get it up and running in England. That's mm. the plan. And yeah, I'm very excited for a bit of change. And um, yeah. Already done the Adam McCullough, um what do you call it? Collab? Yeah. That was pretty cool. Jersey United went really well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, no, nah, I'm keen to see what the future holds, but got to travel the world see the world for what it is and yeah. get out of your comfort zone so that that's the plan man mm. and you're coming with me oh, i'm definitely open to traveling yeah yeah definitely Dope. and the uk is on my list so mm-hmm. definitely i've done a bit but I could always do more so hell yeah which means i'll miss the entire football season so that's right we're supposed to be dropping next don't get used to this face <laughs> <laughs> what's that what's going well, to be the, yeah the, the thing is like free will probably be winning flags when i'm over in england bro <laughs> so i'll probably miss it yeah, but yeah, true. if you go traveling now, West Coast will just be in the pits anyway. So mm. it's a good time. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that's probably all I had for today. Do Thanks. Is there anything you want to add? Um, everyone some drops some fun facts. Fun facts. What's grey and comes in pints? <laughs> and Grandpa. <a> <laughs> no, nah, um, all I want to say is go tra- check out the Drewsy Yarn podcast on uh, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. And... Um, Show Jesse some love because he needs don't, it. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Comment Jesse some love. Show yeah. Jesse some love because he needs it. That's so sad. People that probably so haven't made it this far, but if you have, That's show some love. Point. Yeah, we're probably down to our f- last four viewers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, um, the al- algorithm's going to sting me hard on this one for not uploading f- and then doing back to back podcasts. Yeah, true. Algorithm. Yeah. Cool. Bye. All right. Thanks, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. We'll be back. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs>